I attended Cyber Roundup a few weeks ago, and look, that's me in the audience. Elon basically told me to go down to Vegas and see the Vegas Loop in action. And we, we actually have an operational tunnel in Vegas right now. If you, if you go to Vegas, uh, go to Resorts World, and you can hop in the tunnel and, and go to the convention center. So I drove from Salt Lake City to Vegas, and I made it happen. Hey guys, it's Ellie in space. I'm here in Las Vegas and we're going 40 feet underground right now. We are here at the Las Vegas Convention Center, about to ride on the Vegas Loop and I'm so excited to show you guys what the tunnels look like inside. Now keep in mind the goal is to eventually have 29 miles of connecting tunnels and 51 stations. Okay you guys, so finally we're in Vegas. And I'm going to actually ride in those illuminated tunnels that you see. I have been working so hard to actually get a ride in there. Uh, oh, water just dropped on my head. It's funny, they were like, all oh, media's here. We gotta like, you know, make it all official. I'm like, don't worry, it's just me. It's a one man band. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, this is really exciting. Uh, I'm excited to go in the tunnel. Now, of course, yeah, they're, they're in Tesla's. We're not doing like the Hyperloop speed as some people I think confuse the Vegas loop for right now. Run. This underground transportation system was funded by the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority at a cost of $52.5 million. And the Convention Center Loop utilizes all electric Tesla vehicles. Now passengers load into these Teslas that are capable of carrying three people at a time. Uh, they even, for people who've never been in a Tesla. Would you guys go ahead and buckle up for me? Now the number of vehicles in operation at any given moment is based on the convention center trade show schedule, but I'm told they have a fleet of a little over 80 Teslas. And the system is designed to transport up to 4,400 attendees per hour per direction across the campus. And get this, it takes less than two minutes to transport passengers across the campus by foot that could be a 20 to 30 minute walk. And the Teslas have the capacity to go up to 150 miles per hour, but currently they are topping out at 40 miles an hour because the distance of the tunnels is so short. The best part, the underground transportation system is free for convention attendees. Now, many of you have asked about emergency exits. Well, for now, with the short distances that the tunnels travel, for now, those passenger stations actually are the only emergency exits. But the loop will get longer, and I'm told that as that distance increases in between stations, there will actually be emergency exits added. It's just currently they're not needed. And I had someone tag me on Twitter criticizing the loop, of course, but they do pose a good question. Is all of this flooding that Vegas has seen recently affecting the tunnels? It has been an above average monsoon season and the rain definitely affected my trip while I was there. I had to dodge some thunderstorms while I was hiking that came on rather quickly and I had to bail out of some climbing I'd planned due to all of the water pooled in the canyons. But is all of this water getting down to the tunnels? Well, according to my driver. Has the water been an issue? I know you guys got a lot of rain recently. Um, not from my experience. <laughs> um, okay. I have yet to experience water being down in the tunnels. So my driver says that he has not experienced water in the tunnels despite there being a significant amount of rain recently. So interesting. Also, this investigation by the local Vegas paper reveals the same result after interviewing the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority President and CEO Steve Hill. He said the Convention Center Loop was built after various permit applications that address the flooding risk were approved. And he says, quote, that's part of what happens when you go through the building permit process. They check for all those types of things. The tunnel we have here at the convention center is under the water table. The tunnel itself is not completely and utterly sealed, but pretty close. The tunnels feature a pumping system that allows any water that infiltrates the system to be moved. 
but there's very little water that seeps into the tunnel through the walls. And water flowing into the tunnels via the entrances and exits are not an issue as well. Hill goes on to say, quote, as part of that building permit and design process of the system, those are elevated above what the drainage level is. There's really no way for water to drain into the tunnels that's designed into the process. And check out the track for the Vegas Loop. It requires no electrified third rail like most subways as each vehicle is battery powered. Therefore, there are no touch hazards in the tunnel and the entire track can be used as a walkway for emergency exits. A bi-directional ventilation system is designed to exceed applicable standards and the tunnels feature redundant power and communication systems. And even as I was editing this video, Elon tweeted this. He says, would be cool to do a much simplified Hyperloop demo tunnel between maybe Austin and San Antonio. It is the fastest way to get between one downtown and another with known physics and the standard model is proving quite resilient. So bear in mind that the Las Vegas Convention Center is about 200 acres. So you're gonna get a lot of steps in just by being at the Convention Center. Now, I wanna show you guys something down at the South Hall, but right now we are here at the Central Station. So instead of walking, which would take about 20 minutes, we're gonna take the tunnels and that should save us a lot of time. It should take only about three minutes. Wow, we're already there. No kidding. <laughs> saved a lot of time, holy crap. All right, you guys, so check this out. This is the cutter head, and this is what goes in front of the boring machine and eats away all of the dirt and caliche, and then the tunnel is constructed behind it. And in case you guys were wondering, this is 13 feet in diameter. Now, keep in mind, they're constructing another tunnel right now, but that uh, machine is actually more advanced than this one, so it allows them to tunnel faster. And within the first year of being open, they've shut settled over 400,000 guests across the LVCC campus. I've also noticed as I was doing my research for this video, there's a lot of hate <laughs> for these tunnels. Uh, a lot of doubters, a lot of people that say that this is completely inefficient. Um, so, you know, I want to experience it for myself, see what I think about it. Um, obviously, this tunnel, underground tunnel network system could eventually work for us on Mars. But yeah, a lot of people are actually not huge fans of this. So. I'm just gonna do my best to be transparent with you. So when will the tunnels actually be driverless? Well, they're planning on testing that soon, but it has to go through Clark County for approval. And the entire system is far from being done built. Allegiant Stadium will be among the properties next in line for station approval. A land use permit and a building permit for potentially multiple stations at Allegiant Stadium are needed before any work can begin. Now, after the Westgate Station, the Caesars Loop and Tropicana Loop are set to be the next ones constructed, those will be built as separate projects and eventually connected as the system grows. They hope to have portions of those loops in operation sometime in 2023. Explain maybe the different colors. So you have general colors like red meaning stop, <laughs> yeah. um, yellow meaning caution. Um, generally it's slow yourself down. Um, there could be something in obstruction or something. And then um, we have blinking lights for eight like to the next station to exit in case there's an evacuation situation. But for the most part, they're that simple. Like they're just to let the drivers know who are in tunnel that, all right, this is a tunnel that you can travel through. This is a tunnel that you can travel through. When you first drove through it, did it feel quite narrow? Because it, it does look quite narrow. Um, not really. Okay. Um, but good. I also come from slightly different background than probably some of the other drivers. Um, I come from motorsports. Oh, nice. So <laughs> I don't even pay, like, I pay attention to the walls as far as, like, acknowledging their existence. But it's not where I'm focused. Um, and I've been trained as a driver to focus on where I want to take the car. So I'm not even looking at the narrowness of it. It's just, right. like, drive to a point. Um, but for some people, it can be sort of a claustrophobic thing because you're going from this to yeah. home vision which can affect you but it hasn't been a negative effect on me um i haven't heard any of the other drivers have any issue with it honestly right. i've only heard one passenger say something about it but she wasn't really like 
overtly nervous about it. She's right. like, oh, like as we pulled into the oh, tunnel. Oh, what is this? This is the gate to get over to um, Riviera. I forgot. How long have you been driving? Here? Um, I've probably been here a few months. Cool. Doing research for this story, there's been like a lot of criticism with like traffic in the tunnels. Is that just like a, a clip that was totally taken out of context and you don't get a lot of traffic? Um, on busier days, I would assume the traffic would naturally increase. Um, but it's not, we haven't had traffic jams from right. my experience. Um, just, you know traffic will pick up as you have like a, a convention that is far more populated more right. people are in there therefore more cars will be in there it's just the natural tendency of scaling if you have 10 people at a time needing a ride then you don't have as much traffic as if you have 100 people needing a ride so right. um, I don't think traffic I think we've probably dealt with more congestion up top where we do deal with like cars that aren't in the loop than we do in the loop itself. Mm. So the loop itself is run pretty like rigorously and like well oiled and organized. Man, they do, they look like so tiny from this perspective, that little like entrance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. That's exactly what happens is, all right, you, you gotta drive in and the person's like, oh, cause it looks like the world's closing. Yeah. In. But one, I think the lights generally help with the whole like- Oh yeah. Totally. Tunnel vision thing. Mm -hmm, it yeah. it kind of opens the space up a little bit, which makes it a little easier for people who are uh, claustrophobic. How often does Elon come here to oversee things, <laughs> if ever? I have never seen him here. You've so never seen him? Okay. I've All seen right. pictures of him down here on yeah. many tweets and stuff, but yeah. I've never actually seen him here. That'd be pretty cool though, to see him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen him a couple times now. Oh, yeah? I was just at the um, Cyber Roundup, so I sat very close which nice. was very cool so we're so we're back at square one this is central station so. oh cool so this is where we started right mm -hmm. so maybe explain like the zigzag um like parking kind of situation we have here okay so the parking situation and why you pull in the way you pull in is so cars don't have to go into reverse mm. um it obviously anytime you're reversing a car it increases the chances of things going wrong so to keep everything efficient you want to pull in and pull out so that way you're just staying in one gear always traveling forward and nothing is ever traveling backwards okay. obviously there are times in which a car may have to go into reverse usually that's controlled by our uh, OCC but for the most part you should only be traveling forward so the spaces are set up to where you have enough room to pull all the way in and have enough room to pull out without running into the vehicle in front of you and without uh, impeding any vehicle behind mm. you so okay. it's all about just forward travel oh we have an, a software update coming <laughs> cool can you explain what this is this little like mini this tablet is how we stay in touch with our OCC so operation control ah. so if you notice I wear a headset it's nice. just so they can communicate with us directly or as an all car um, it's basically just generally how they keep everything I would say controlled and yeah. running efficiently um, so for example if there's an influx of people at West Station and we have a bunch of cars at Central they may call for all the cars and then just go over to West mm. in order to account for the people um, or if we have too many cars going over there they may say okay we'll go to this station and hold so they're kind of like it's it's moving the system around as needed which is part of what makes the system dynamic and genius it's unlike a tram system where you're fixed like the right. tram has to do certain things this operates generally like a tram system since it is in tunnels but you're able to individually control sectors of it right. so you can send half vehicles this way half vehicles that way and still have effectiveness on any portion of the tunnel system that you need to resorts world because we're going to do an experiment everyone i'm taking the boring tunnel to resorts world then we're going to do even more of an experiment and have all you can eat sushi which sounds very sketchy and then we're going to walk back and see how much further the walk is uh i should have timed this it'll be quick I'm going to walk in the heat after eating sushi. I'm going to walk in the heat after eating sushi. That 
Hopefully it doesn't food poison me. You know, that's, <laughs> you're an adventurer. Living on the edge. I really am. I like it. I really am. Last time I was here, uh, my parents had to file a missing persons report on me. Because oh, I got 50. my canyoneering anonymous. Why would I answer anonymous? That's scary. Hell no. About the missing persons report. Hell no. <laughs> no. So I did a canyoneering adventure and um, took 19 hours to get off the mountain. There was no service. It was only supposed to take 10 hours. It was, eh, it was crazy. Sounds fun. It was fun, but it wasn't fun having my family think I was dead and yeah, then that's kind of resent me for it. And Where were you? Yeah. Why, why didn't you answer? Well, I was trying to literally survive. <laughs> Repel 23. Uh, slot canyons, so it's nuts. Wow, that was really short. Cool. Yeah, that walk's not gonna be that short. That's all right. Fair I love to walk. <laughs> That's one of the things I love about Vegas. You get your steps in. Yeah, so. this is true. This is definitely true. Yeah. I've done way worse, I promise. <laughs> oh, and I did a little experiment that I didn't document very well. I basically timed myself going through the tunnel. That took like less than two minutes, and then my plan was to walk back from Resorts World to my car at the convention center, which I did. I didn't really document it well, but it took about 10 to 15 minutes, so definitely saved a lot of time in the tunnel. But I had to leave my all-you-can-eat sushi lunch early because I got a call to do an interview with the CEO of Boxable. We had such a great tour of the factory. I'm working on that video. You will not want to miss it. So make sure to subscribe to Ellie in Space because that video is also on the way. So again, if you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to Ellie in Space so you don't miss any future videos. And a big special thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much for subscribing to my Patreon. If you're interested in helping me out, I will leave a link in the description. I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.